Good day, I'm Theodore Henry and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, August 16, 2022. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has added 120 newly trained police constables to its cadre of crime fighters. They will add to the force establishment, which currently stands above 12,000 for the first time in the more than 150-year existence of the JCF. During the recent Passing Out Parade, Certificate and Awards Ceremony held at the National Police College, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang urged the new police personnel to be true to the mission of serving the Jamaican people with dignity and due care. Whenever you step out in the public domain, you are autonomous, independent legal official who has personal liability and responsibility for your actions and in action. In order to carry out your duties, effectively you must be unbiased, impartial, and accountable to your actions at all times. Specialized areas of training for the graduates included gender-based violence and general rights-based approaches to policing. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the new Gated Communities Act is in the final stage of drafting and will go before cabinet soon. The Prime Minister gave the update on Friday as he handed over 63 housing units at Industry Cove Manor in Hanover. That will give uh, a little bit more control over communities like these. Communities like these, the value is only preserved if each homeowner preserves the value of their property. So I'm urging you Abide by the rules set by the community organization. You should do everything to preserve the value of your investment. Industry Cove Manor is a national housing trust development that consists of 23 detached two-bedroom units and 42-bedroom townhouses spread across 12.5 acres of land. The two-bedroom units were sold at a cost of $17.89 million each, while the townhouses each cost $18.72 million. Jamaica's spice industry is to be amplified by a $20 million U.S. dollar grant. It will be dispersed over a five-year period by the United States Department of Agriculture under the Food for Progress program. U.S. Ambassador to Jamaica Nick Perry made the disclosure during a recent courtesy call on Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. at the ministry's offices in Kingston. Jamaica is one of 10 countries selected for the grant this year, which will be awarded this month. It comes against the background of an exponential growth of the spice industry in the U.S., especially as it concerns ginger, turmeric, and pimento. The initiative will target the marketing and development of products and will promote sustainable and climate-friendly farming to yield best results. Jamaica and the Cayman Islands will be collaborating to boost tourism in both nations. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett recently met with a special delegation from the Cayman Islands to initiate discussions on areas of common interest. Among the areas being examined for cooperation are multi-destination tourism, airlift, enhancing border protocols, rationalizing airspace, and resilience building. Minister Bartlett is to meet with key industry players in Cayman next month to focus specially on multi-destination tourism. We think that the meeting in Cayman with the IATA in September could be the stepping stone for coalescing our position on elements of multi-destination, but more so looking at airlift and airline collaboration. The Cayman Islands Deputy Premier and Minister for Finance and Economic Development and Border Control and Labor, Christopher Saunders, says his government is re-energized to see how both nations can build mutual interest. I think the first step is to get the traffic here and then we can decide amongst ourselves how best we can share it. But the most important thing is to use this time now to see how the Caribbean can benefit. The delegation from the Cayman Islands also included Minister of Tourism and Transport, Kenneth Bryan. And finally, visitors to the Hanover Parish Library will be treated to a piece of Jamaica's history. That's thanks to Friday's unveiling of a life-sized statue of the island's first Prime Minister and national hero, Sir Alexander Bustamante. The sculpture is accompanied by two storyboards recounting Sir Alexander's contributions to nation-building. 
The project was funded by the Tourism Product Development Company Limited, TPD Co., at a cost of $3 million. The monuments are there to say, you must never forget. You are a part of a great people, a great struggle. And though the times may be hard now, we're going to overcome. We don't have enough of our monuments. Our history is not fully told. We don't make the connections. We believe we are just existing in this time and that's the end of it. When we die, that's the end of it. Not seeing that we are part of generations. Sir Alexander was born in Hanover on February 24, 1884. He was instrumental in the labor movement of the 1930s, which led to the formation of unions and political parties, the passage of universal adult suffrage, and later political independence. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.